All right, this time we'll talk about the grasses and legumes, which are two major forage families. We'll talk about the grass first, and we'll talk about legume next. The grasses are the plant with long, narrow leaves, and they have a stem that uh, looks like a very narrow uh, cylinders. There are two types of grass. It could be a cool season grass or warm season grass. The cool season grass belongs to C3 plants, whereas the warm season grass, they belong to the C4 plants. We call them that way because those cool season grass, they produce the compound with made of three carbons as the product of uh, photosynthesis. Whereas the warm season grass, they produce the compound with four carbons as a product of their, their photosynthesis. This cool season grass, they're the plant uh, growing in the temperate climate. Whereas the warm season grass, they're the plant growing on in the tropical climate. Okay. So those uh, cool season grass, which are temperate plants, they grow best when the temperature is below 80 degrees Fahrenheit, so like a spring and fall in North Carolina. Whereas the warm season grass, they grow better uh, when the temperature is pretty high, above 95, so like uh, July uh, in here in North Carolina. A good example of cool season grasses are the fescue, or orchard grass, and timothy grass, or rye grass. Whereas the warm season grasses are the Bermuda grass and sweet grass. If we compare the nutritional composition between cool season grass and warm season grass, you can see that the warm season grass they have lower uh, content of protein. And they have a higher content of fiber compared with uh, cool sitting grass. So next slide shows a chart uh, showing when uh, different types of grasses are uh, growing better. So it's starting from the January to the December here. So at the top portion, uh, which are the cool sitting grass, you can see that they're growing better uh, in the spring and the fall, but their growth is kind of stopped in the in the middle of the hot summer time. Whereas the bottom parts here, you can see uh, the warm season grass, and you can see that they grow well uh, during the hot summer time. Okay. So hope you can differentiate between cool season grass and warm season grass and uh, which one has more fiber or more protein. So if you know, remember those. Now we're at the legumes, and okay, those are the ones, the plants. They have uh, rhizobia bacteria in the root, so they are able to fix the nitrogen from the soil, so it can provide nitrogen to the plants. The examples are the clava and the alfalfa, Usually, they have three leaves uh, per stem, so that's how you could differentiate them from others, right? like clover. Okay. Related to those, now let's talk about the quality of forages, uh, how the quality of forages are affected. First, depending on the ratio between the leaves and stem, that could affect the forage quality. Because the leaves are more nutritious than stems, so if you have a forages with uh, more leaves, then it could be more nutritious to the animals than the uh, uh, forages with more stem. Number two, depending on the age of the plant, okay, young plants are usually more nutritious than older plant, because the older plant will, eat, will have a cells with thicker cell walls which are the structural carbohydrates, the last nutrition. Whereas the young plants, 
We'll have a cells with more cell contents, like starch and sugars, right? and proteins. Okay? So those are uh, more uh, digestible and available to the animals. Number three, vegan plants are usually uh, a better quality than the, the grass uh, forages. Because legumes, they have a higher nitrogen content and they're more digestible too. Number four, the harvesting method and storaging method can also affect the quality of the forages. Okay. So here now we'll uh, talk about um, each of those. Okay. The pasture, which are fresh forage, hay, which are uh, dry forage, and silage, which is the inside forage. So we'll talk about each of them more in details. First, pasture. Okay, that's the area where the plants are growing, uh, which are available to the animals that they can graze. Okay, Some many factors that can affect the quality of pastures, such as uh, soil, condition, soil condition, uh, types of fertilizer that, uh, that has been used. Okay. So depending on those, uh, like nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium content could be different. And in some uh, soil, you, you may use lime, which are the source of calcium so just the pH of the soil, so depending on the condition of soil and fertilizer, that will affect the quality of pastures. Also, of course, the types of plants grown in that area, that will affect the quality of that pasture. Either they are legumes or grasses. If they are grasses, uh, if they are warm season grass or cool season grasses, that will all affect the pasture quality. Number three, stage of maturity of the, of the plant growing in the pasture uh, will also affect the quality. Okay, and as you see in this chart, uh, Y-X is dry weight of organic materials, and the X-X is the stage of maturity. Uh, maturity. Okay. So you can see that as the plant grow, obviously dry matter content increase. So less water, of course, the fiber increase because the, those fibers are making the structure of the plant. However, the protein content increase also, but uh, uh, relatively slowly compared with the increase of fiber. Right? So here you can see that mature plant compared with the younger plant, they'll have more fiber. And how you let the animal graze a pasture, that will eventually also affect the quality of the pastures. Okay? Of course, you don't want to uh, let the animals overgraze or undergraze. The reason are, the reasons are, if you let the animals graze too much, okay, then they will eat the most of the part of the plants growing there. So that will make the plants uh, weak and all those leaves will be gone and plants will die and uh, you can you could have a soil erosions when you have a rain all the soils will be washed and also uh, there are greater chance that the weeds can grow okay? because uh, uh, basically you remove most of the the plant in the pasture so all the stuff can grow whereas if you undergraze the pasture then those plants will be older okay so they will have a longer time to grow so that those plants will be mature so they are less nutritional value if there are tall plants and short plants those tall plants will dominate and the short plants will slowly disappear so uh, that will affect the uh, quality of the pastures too Since we talked about grazing, overgrazing, or undergrazing, 
let's talk about different types of grazing systems. There's one called continuous grazing. And in the next slide, there's another one called a rotational grazing. In the next slide, so next slide, just intensive rotational grazing, or also called strip, strip grazing. Okay. I'll go back and talk about continuous grazing. This is just basically you have a pasture and you let them um, graze anywhere. Okay. So you yeah, just let them uh, uh, graze anywhere. Okay. Advantage is basically uh, you have a low maintenance. Okay, you are not really controlling them, so it's low cost. However, the disadvantage is it's hard to control if they do overgrazing or undergrazing. It's not easy to control that. And there's a limitation of how many animals you can put in the per acre, acreage. Okay? So it's easy to do, but it's hard to maintain the good quality forages, or good quality pastures. So you can do a rotational grazing if you don't want continuous grazing. Okay? So the rotational grazing, you are dividing the pasture into two or more. Uh, different sections. Okay, so some parts animals are grazing, and the other parts are you let them uh, uh, not grazed, so the plant can have a time to grow again. Advantage, so you can uh, better match uh, the a pasture to the animal's need, and you can maintain a good quality of pastures because uh, the plants, they will have a time to grow back. Disadvantage is uh, you need more main maintenance. Okay? So that's the disadvantage. But if you want to be more serious, and you can do um, intensive rotational grazing, also called strip grazing. For this, usually you, you will need a movable uh, electric fence, so it can retain the animals in one specific area. Okay, let them graze uh, the forages or pastures in that specific area, and then you're moving uh, the electric fence to the next area, so animals are moved, and then they're grazing here, and then moved again and again and again. So you let them graze uh, the plant in the small area, so they cannot select what they want to eat, and then you are moving to the next one. So the advantage is you can better use the forage, and you can um, let the animals eat uh, all the uh, plants in that specific area, so animals will not pick only what they want to eat. This advantage will be uh, more maintenance. So you have to buy those electric fans, so the cost of fencing will be higher. And you have to move the animals to different uh, pastures, so there, 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 are, there are increased labor costs. And you're talking about uh, let them graze a small area, so in those small area you should have a source of water. Okay, those are the disadvantages. All right. This time, let's talk about the potential problems that animals could have when they're grazing pastures. I'm mainly talking about ruminants and the horses. There are four different symptoms that those animals could have. The first one is blood. It can cause to, can happen to the ruminants, when, especially when they are eating uh, legume pastures, which are highly nutritious. That means when they eat these uh, microorganisms in the rumen, they will eat well. They will utilize those nutri nutrients in those uh, those legume pastures fairly well. That means uh, the fermentation will occur fast, and there will be a big uh, production of the gas. However, there are natural compounds uh, in the legume plants which will cause the formation of forms in the rumen and they will uh, 
entrap the gas. So there are so many small bubbles that will trap the gas. Okay? So those gases is supposed to be uh, escaping uh, the body by belching when the, the, um, the uh, ruminant will try to remove this gas. So they should be removed. However, since they are trapped in the small bubbles, those gases cannot, cannot escape the body. Okay? So then, as you see in this picture here, this uh, cattle has a big uh, swollen belly here. That's because of the gas in the room and it cannot, cannot be escaping, cannot be escaped. Okay? So that could happen uh, because the animal cannot uh, do belching or irritation. They can uh, cause the suffocation and sometimes it can cause the death of the animals. Okay? So that can be a problem especially if your ruminant animals are grazing uh, legume pastures. So it can prevent those. Okay. So you can um, buy and provide anti-bloat mineral blocks. Okay. Or you can use uh, anti-bloat uh, capsules uh, and put that, put that in the rumen. Okay. Or uh, as a more practical prevention, you can you can let them graze uh, the mixed pastures, mix the legume with grasses together. Okay. The second problem that uh, animals could have is nitrate toxicity. If your animals are grazing pastures which is well fertilized with nitrogen, or those pastures are under drought condition. So dry matter content is high, then animals are getting more nitrate okay, from those pastures. Then those nitrate will go into the rumen, and the microorganisms in the rumen will convert the nitrate to nitrite. This nitrite can be easily absorbed into the body, but what it could do is uh, it will be uh, going, it will bind to the hemoglobin. Those are the hemoglobin, including ferrous. This nitrite will convert the ferrous to ferric, so this uh, hemoglobin will have a ferric. But the problem is, these types of hemoglobin are unable to carry the oxygen. So animals will feel like they are deficient in oxygen in the body. So they will have an increased respiration. They can do trembling. Or even they can die because of that. So uh, to prevent that, you want to know what kind of uh, plants are growing. Uh, you want to test the forages. And uh, if, if you have a drought, you want to wait until these plants are uh, growing again. And you want to uh, the, add the haze to the pasture. Okay. Another problem we could have is uh, called grass tetany. It has different names. It's a hypomagnesia. It means the animals will have a low level of magnesium in the blood. Cause, cause, uh, it can uh, affect the ruminants. So if you do high nitrogen fertilization, especially in the cool weather, and that's when the plant ten, plants can grow really fast, and animals are eating those plants, they can result in um, the animals eating the plant low in magnesium but high in potassium. That's what, uh, when the plants uh, are growing fast. Okay. So uh, because of that, animals will have a low magnesium in the blood. Okay. The symptoms of those are uh, they have a incoordination and also it can actually cause the death to the animals. How we can prevent? You can put the mineral block, including magnesium oxide. Okay? So you're providing the additional magnesium, especially in uh, early spring uh, when those plants are growing really fast. 
the last problem that I, we can learn here is fescue toxicosis. Right? That can happen to the ruminant, but also to the horses, especially when they are eating uh, the fescue uh, pasture, especially with the like Kentucky 31, that's one of the examples. Okay. They are hardy, uh, hardy plants, because um, this plant could have a fungus growing uh, in the leaves and stems and seed. But this fun fungi could produce some toxin called endophyte. So those endophytes can cause the issues to the animals. So animals eating those fescue with the uh, endophytes, they will uh, gain less, they will not eat well, and they have uh, other problems. They are not uh, strong against the heat uh, stress. They will lose hair and their lameness, and so that happens. So how can you prevent that? Basically, you could have fescue uh, which doesn't contain endophyte, so they don't have those kind of fungus. So the types of fescue is called MaxQ. Okay, but the uh, thing is, it could be expensive. Okay. Or you can let the animals to graze the different uh, forages other than fescue. Okay. Right. So we talked about four different uh, problems that animals could have when they're grazing the pastures.